Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in this video, I want to do something a little bit differently than I normally do. Today, I want to include a piano in the video. The piano has been my greatest teacher of music that I've ever had. So I've been a lifelong student of music. Even before I started playing guitar at age 11, I was always, you know, messing around with pianos and saxophones and whatever I could get my hands on. I was always, always interested in music. And then once, once I started playing guitar, you know, I've had lots of different guitar teachers. I've taken lots of music classes. I've read lots of books. I've jammed with a lot of different musicians, learned things from different people. By far, the number one greatest teacher that I've ever had has been a piano. So I bought my own nice digital piano about 10 years ago or something like that. And the day that I bought that digital piano was really the day that I started to really understand music. I thought I understood music prior to that. But once I got a piano, things just started to make sense like no other. All right, and that's what—that's the purpose of this video. So um, this isn't necessarily a piano lesson. It's going to be geared towards understanding the fretboard and how to use the piano to help you understand this fretboard. If you are looking for like a piano course, I do have a recommendation. It's called Piano for All. I bought the course uh, probably about 10 years ago, the same time I bought the uh, digital piano. And uh, it was $39, I think, and I just looked at the price today, and it's still $39. And that is a ridiculously good value for the course. Uh, I think the course includes like eight different ebooks, and each ebook is like tons of pages with tons of examples and videos and practice exercises and stuff like that. And each ebook is geared towards a specific genre of music. So you have like blues piano, jazz piano, pop piano, rock piano, things like that. So if you are looking for like an in-depth piano course, check that out. I'll post a link to that in the description. Yes, it's an affiliate link, full disclosure, but I use it myself. I highly recommend it. Um, so if you are interested in a piano course, check that out. But with that said, let's get started and uh, see how these two uh, relate to each other. All right, so the primary difference between a piano and a guitar is the way that the notes are laid out. So there's only 12 notes on a piano and there's only 12 notes on a guitar. So it looks like there's more, but each of the 12 notes can be found in different octaves on both piano and guitar. So, for example, let's take the note C. So every time you have two black keys on a piano, the white key right to the left of the two black keys is going to be the note C. So you have a C here, 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 down here. So everywhere there's two black keys, there's a C right to the left of it. So let's look at a guitar. On the guitar, you have multiple Cs as well. So you have a C here, here, here here. The primary difference with the guitar though is that you have multiple instances of the same pitch of the same note. For example, the note right here, eighth fret of the low E string, is the note C. The same exact C can be found on the third fret of the A string right here. So you have the exact same pitched note in two different spots. So you can also have other octaves of the note C. So here's a C in one octave. Here's a C in another octave. Here's a C in another octave. So you can have multiple octaves of the same note C, but you can also have the same instance of the same note C on the guitar. So that's not possible on a piano. The second thing is you can move up and down in the pitch of notes in either the uh, parallel to the string direction on guitar perpendicular to the strings direction or diagonally. So you have three directions that you can move up or down in pitch on a note on a guitar. So that's not possible on a piano. On a piano, you can only move up or down in one single direction, left or right. So that's the number one primary difference between a piano and a guitar. And the fact that the piano only has that one direction of uh, movement is the primary reason why it makes all of this music theory stuff make so much more sense. So let's get into some of that stuff now. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the concept of key signatures. So key signatures is something that a piano student will learn on day one, but a guitar player they may go their entire lives and never understand what a key signature is. So if you're watching this video and you don't know what a key signature is, it's normal. That's that's very normal for a guitar player to not know that stuff. It's not the fault of the guitar player. It's the fact that the notes on a guitar are laid out differently than they are on a piano makes the concept of key signatures not so obvious. So what I mean, what do I mean by key signature? Basically, there is uh, there's 12 possible key signatures. 
and each of the 12 possible key signatures contains exactly seven notes, a set of seven unique notes. So if you want to play in the key of C, you have to figure out what those seven notes are from the key of C, and then only play those notes. If you play any other notes aside from those seven notes, that's going to be considered an out-of-key note. If you play a chord that contains one of those notes that's not in the key, that's going to be an out-of-key chord. You can still use out-of-key chords, just understand that it's not part of the key signature. So let me show you what I mean by the key signature of C major. So if I take my note C, and I play the seven unique notes of the C major scale, that's going to tell you the notes of the C major key signature. So C major happens to contain no sharps and no flats, meaning that there's no black keys, it's just white keys. So here's the key signature of C major. There's my seven notes. Then I start back over on C. I could play the C major scale in the higher octave. All right, so those are my seven notes. If I want to play in the key signature of, say, G major, I'm going to have to start on my note G, play the G major scale, and then play the seven unique notes from that key. So G major happens to contain one sharp, and so there's six white notes and then one black key. So here's the G major scale. So that's my G major scale, and as you can see, those seven unique notes were six white keys and one black key. All right, so let me show you the exact same two scales on a guitar now. So I'm just going to play the, um, I'm just going to choose a pattern to play each of these scales in. There's multiple different ways to play the same scale on a guitar, which is yet another reason that this stuff is not obvious on guitar. But I'm just going to choose this one specific pattern. So let me play the C major scale starting here on the 8th fret, which is the note C. So here's your C major scale. And then back on C. So if I want to play the G major scale, I can use that same exact pattern. I just have to start on the note G. So here's my note G, 3rd fret. And then start here. And then you're back on G again. So. Both of these scale patterns are exactly the same pattern on the guitar, but when we looked at it on the keyboard, it was two different patterns. So on the piano, on the piano, it was clear as day that the key signature of C major was different than the key signature of G major. All right, you see that in the key signature of C major, there's only white keys. In the key signature of G major, there's six white keys and one black key. So Super obvious on piano, not super obvious on guitar. Let's take this a step further. Let's now look at the chords that are found in each of these keys. So the way that you determine chords for a key is you take the scale, you take the seven notes of the scale, the seven unique notes, you start on one of the seven notes, and then you just play every other note. So for the C major notes, for, for the C major, for the chords found in the key of C major, I take my scale and I play every other note. So here's C. Here's the first chord. Then I can start on the second note and play every other note. That's my second chord. Third chord. And then back at the C major chord again. So those are my seven chords. So the names of these chords are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, um, G major, A minor, B diminished, and then C major. I'll explain why they are major versus minor coming up in this video. But those are my chords. So let's look at the chords of the key of G major now. So G major, I would have to start on the G, and then within the seven unique notes of the G major scale, I just play every other note. So here's my first chord. This is a G major chord. Second chord is an A minor chord. Third chord is a B minor chord. Fourth chord is a C major. Fifth chord is D major. Sixth chord is E minor. And then seventh chord is an F sharp diminished. So as you can see, I did the exact same thing. And to find my in key chords, I only played the notes of the scale doing every other note. And you can see that some of the chords contain that one sharp, that one F sharp note for the key of G major. So let me now play some chord progressions on the guitar. I'm going to play a chord progression in the key of C major. So in the key of C major, I'm going to play something like this. All 
right? So I played that chord progression. It sounded good. You may, you know, just by the sound, you may assume that everything was part of the same key. But do you really know? You know, like maybe I might have played a D major chord instead. Maybe I might have done something like this. <laughs> So I threw a D major chord in there, and if you weren't, you know, if, if you don't really know too much theory and you just kind of noodle around with open chords on guitar, you may think that that D major chord was part of that key. What's to tell you that it's not, unless you actually look at the notes? So I'm, I'll explain to you on a piano why it's not. I'm going to play the exact same chord progression, but on a guitar, is that obvious? Not really. It's not obvious which chords are part of a key and which chords are not. That's why I always recommend looking at the circle of fifths because the circle of fifths, they'll group your in-key chords together like so. So if you want to know your in-key chords for the key of C major, or if you want to know the in-key chords of the key of G major, there you go. But without the circle of fifths and just using a guitar fretboard, that's not super obvious. Let's look at this on the piano. I'm going to play the exact same chord progression. I'm also going to throw in bass notes too, just to kind of fill it out. So for a C chord, I'm going to play the C down low. I'm going to use octaves using my uh, thumb and pinky. So here's, here's a C chord. And then we move to the A minor chord. So move down to the A. And then we went to a D minor chord. So right here. And then G major chord. I didn't play any black keys. Super obvious that everything was in the key of C major. Let's say I wanted to try to do the other variation and throw in that D major chord. Let's see if that becomes obvious now. So uh, the progression was. So you can see that on the um, D major chord, I had this, this note in here. So that told you right away, that's an out of key chord. In the key of C major, only white keys. If there's any black keys involved, then it's an out of key chord. So on piano, you instantly know what's in key and what's not based on the key signature. Day one stuff on piano, not so obvious on guitar. So that's the, um, that's the whole concept of key signature. Let's take this a step further now. So the next thing I want to talk about is major chords versus minor chords. So in any given key signature, there's 12 possible key signatures. In any of the 12 possible key signatures, you're going to have three major chords, three minor chords, and one diminished chord. So how do you know that? Well, the piano tells you these things. So if you look at your key signature, if you look at the seven unique notes of a key, you can look and say, okay, the first chord by playing the every other note method, Every other note, you can look at them and how far the, the other notes are away from the root note. That will tell you if it's a major chord, a minor chord, or a different type of chord. So let me start by playing a C major chord. All right, so that's the first three notes, or that's the, uh, the first, third, and fifth note, the every other note method within the C major scale. So C major scale, every other note, that's the first chord. That's a C major chord. The difference between a major chord and a minor chord is the third. All right, so if this is the third, one, two, three, that's a major third. A minor third is one half step lower. So this is a C minor. C major, C minor. So a C minor is not part of the key of C major. The C minor chord is not part of the key of C major because it contains a black key. All right, so that is an out of key chord for the key of C major. So why are some of the chords in, in, a, in a key major and why are some of them minor? Well, you have to look at the distance that the other notes of the chord are away from the root note. So to make a major chord, you have your root, you have a major third, which is always gonna be four half steps away from the root. And then you have what is known as a perfect fifth, which is seven half steps away from the root. So take your root, Four half steps away. One, two, three, four. It's a major third. All right, and then seven half steps away. Here's your root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's known as a perfect fifth. 
So major third, which is four half, half steps away, uh, perfect fifth, which is seven half steps away. A minor chord is a root, a minor third, which is three half steps away, and then a perfect fifth. So the only difference is that third. So you can look at all the chords that are part of a key signature by doing the every other note method, and then just say, okay, I have my root, how far away is the third? Is it four half steps away or is it three half steps away? How far away is the fifth? All right, so you can look at that, you can count, and you can say, all right, well, that's a major chord, that's a minor chord, that's a minor chord. So let's just look at the uh, chords of C major real quick. So first chord, C major. Second chord, third chord, fourth chord, fifth chord, sixth, seventh. All right, every other note using the seven unique notes of the C major scale. Let's look at each one. So first chord, root. All right, so four half steps away. One, two, three, four. Contains a major third. Next note. Seven half steps away, it contains a perfect fifth. Root, major third, perfect fifth. That's a major chord. Let's look at the next chord. All right, so if that's the next chord, this is my root here. So one, two, three. The next note is only three half steps away. That's a minor third. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a perfect fifth. So this has a root, a minor third, and a perfect fifth. That's a minor chord. You can just count it. You can do this for any key signature, play the seven unique notes, figure out the seven chords that are part of the key by doing the every, every other note method, and then determine if it's a major third or a minor third. All right, so next chord. So here's my root, and then one, two, three, minor third, root, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven half steps, it's a perfect fifth. So root, minor third, perfect fifth. That's an E minor chord. Next chord. All right, so it's root. So one, two, three, four, major third, four half steps, and then root, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven uh, half steps is a perfect fifth. So root, major third, perfect fifth. All right, so I'm not gonna do every single one of them. So G major is a, you know, same thing, major chord. This is a minor chord, root, minor third, perfect fifth. And then when you get to this chord here, this is the diminished chord. As I said, every key has one, uh, three major chords, three minor chords, and one diminished chord. So here's your diminished chord for this key. A diminished chord or diminished triad contains a root, a minor third, and a diminished fifth. A diminished fifth is one half step less than a perfect fifth, or six half steps in total. So you have your root, you have one, two, three, so that's a minor third, it's three half steps away. Then you have your root, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's only six half steps away instead of seven, letting you know that's a diminished fifth as opposed to a perfect fifth. So major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and then diminished. Try that for any of the 12 possible key signatures, you're gonna find out that it always works out the same way. You're gonna be able to tell which chords are major, you're gonna be able to tell which chords are minor, and if it's not major or minor, you can always tell what type of chord it is just by looking at the notes in relation to the root. Very, very obvious on piano, not so obvious on guitar. Let's now look at the relative major minor concept. Next thing I want to talk about is the relative major minor concept. Now this is a topic that confuses tons of guitar players. Guitar players just can't seem to wrap their heads around this whole idea that major and minor are the same thing essentially, just a different focal note or a different tonal center. Once they do wrap their heads around this uh, relative major minor concept, once they understand it, it's like the biggest aha moment that they've ever had. They're like, oh my god, everything makes sense now. Piano, it's super obvious. Guitar, not so much. So let me show you what I mean. So for every major key, there's a relative minor. For every minor key, there's a relative major. There's 12 possible key signatures. Each key signature can be viewed from either the major perspective or the minor perspective. So whatever, the, whatever one of the 12 key signatures you're in, there's seven unique notes. If you start on the one note that makes the major scale and play through your seven unique notes, that's the major scale. You could also play those same exact seven unique notes, but start on the relative minor note, play the exact same seven notes, but just starting on a different note, 
and that's your minor scale. That's the relative major minor pair. So in the key of C major, in the key signature of C major, you have your seven unique notes, all white keys on piano. The relative, ma or the relative minor of C major is A minor. So let me show you. So I'll play the C major scale, starting on the note C, play my seven unique notes. That's the C major scale. The relative minor of C major is A minor. So if I start on the note A within these seven unique notes, here's an A here. I can start on this A. I can start on whatever A I want. I'll just choose this one. I'm going to play the exact same seven notes. I just played a natural minor scale there. So same key signature. There's no black keys involved. Therefore, everything's still in key. I just played the C major scale by starting on the note C or the A natural minor scale by starting on the note A. So is that obvious on guitar? Not at all. So I, that's one of the, the one of the main concepts I try to uh, get across to people is this whole idea of relative major minor stuff. But still, as much as I keep saying this over and over and over, people just don't grasp it. And again, it's not the fault of the guitar player. It's just the way that the guitar is laid out. This stuff is not obvious. On a piano keyboard, it's super, super obvious. Let's look at this on guitar. Let's say I want to play my C major scale. So if I play my C major scale on the guitar, I could play it like this. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, that's a C major scale. A lot of people will think, okay, well, if I want to play my A minor scale, I have to come down here and start on the note A and play this. So that's my A minor scale. So is that obvious? No, it's not obvious at all. That's why I usually teach the C major scale played a little bit differently when I teach this relative major minor concept. So instead of starting here with my first finger on the eighth fret, I'm instead going to start with my pinky on the eighth fret, and I'm going to play these notes. That's my C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. I can also play my A minor scale in that same spot. So keeping everything right in the same spot makes things a little bit more obvious, but still not quite as obvious as on a piano because you don't have white keys and black keys. You just have frets and strings. So if I play this through two octaves, this becomes even more apparent. So if I want to play my C major scale spanned across two octaves, I would start on my note C, which is right here, eighth fret of the low E string. So that's my C major scale spanned across two octaves. If I want to play my A minor scale spanned across two octaves, I start on the note A and play the same thing. And then these notes are also part of the same key. All right, so you can play the same, the relative major minor pair right there. So when you do it like that, it's a little bit more obvious on guitar, but still not quite as obvious on piano. So there's no sharps and flats in the key of C major or A minor. Is that obvious? No. So let's say I want to switch over to the uh, key of G major slash E minor. G major, E minor, relative major, minor pair. I would jump up here um, and I could do the same thing. Again, I could play patterns anywhere on the neck of the guitar because it's only seven notes and those seven notes can be found anywhere. But I'm just going to use this pattern here. So right here, here's my G major scale. <laughs> or my E minor scale. All right, so that's the exact same pattern as what I played down here. I just shifted it up to here. Now, do you know that this contained only one sharp and this contained no sharps? Maybe you do, but it's not as obvious on, as on a piano. So again, just a, a different uh, perspective of how this stuff all applies. So uh, let me now get into the real good stuff. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the fact that the piano is like everything in one. Whereas a guitar, a lot of times we tend to think of lead guitars and then rhythm guitarists and then you have your bass player and then you have your drummer and then you have your singer doing the main melody line. 
Well, all of that stuff is in the keyboard. You have your lead, you have your rhythm, you have your bass line, you have your, um, you know, your percussion, your percussive element, and then you have your melody line. You can put all of that stuff together to form the full band all in just one instrument. So you can do that on guitar too, but you're gonna need to do some finger picking. You're, you're gonna need to do a lot of practice. It's much easier to do it uh, on the piano. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna be using uh, what is known as inversions. So I'm still gonna be playing the same chords. I'm only gonna play four chords. I'm gonna play a C major chord, um, a G major chord, an A minor chord, and an F major chord. But I'm gonna be using what is known as inversions. So here's the C major chord. I'm gonna have my bass notes down here. Here's my C major. So the, the C major chord contains the notes C, E, and G. So if I wanted to take this note G up here, and I wanted to bring it down here while keeping the C and E in the same spot, that's the same chord. All right, so I could play it like this. I could play it like this. I could play it like this, like this. You can do the same thing on guitar using various different shapes, using the cage system and whatnot. Um, but again, it's, it's much more obvious on the piano keyboard. So when I play these chord progressions, a lot of times, rather than jumping around and doing something like this, it's a lot easier to just play inversions. So I usually like to start out with this version of the C here instead of this C. I like to start out with this. And then when I go to the G, I like to play this one. And then when I go to the A, I play this one. And then when I go to the F, I like to play this one. So instead of doing this, I'm gonna do this instead. Same thing, I'm just moving the notes around, playing inversions with my right hand, and then keeping the bass notes consistent in my left hand. So right off the bat, you have your percussive element. So you can use your left and right hand kind of like you would with drums. You can play drum beats essentially with your left and right hand. So let me use the example of Let It Be by the Beatles. So that's in the key of C major, so the rhythm is So that's the, the chord progression of uh, Let It Be. So the melody line for Let It Be is this. So that's the melody line. That's what the singer would be singing. So if I wanted to keep the bass line in there, I could keep the bass line in there. So right there I did uh, essentially what would be the bass line and then I did the melody line. So that's two components. And I guess you could say that the percussive element was there too because I'm going. So keeping the percussive element. So if I wanted to throw in uh, what essentially you could call the rhythm guitar part, instead of just doing the melody line with my right hand, I'll also kind of play chords with my right hand, but making sure that I'm doing the melody line too. So this is a little bit tricky. It's been a while since I've played this song. Um, let me see if I can remember it. So you could do that too. So you have the percussive element, you have the bass line, you have the melody, and then you have the rhythm chords, which is all kind of one and the same. So that's the beauty of the piano. That's really how you, um, you see music as a whole. So guitar is great, I love guitar, but until I started playing piano, I always thought as the rhythm and the lead is kind of two separate things, the piano kind of brought all that stuff together for me. So that's just another thing. So I think this video is running a little bit longer. Uh, 
I will do more of these now that I have my piano connected to the computer. I'm not going to do too much because this is a guitar channel and I know a lot of people don't care about piano on this channel. But if I get enough people saying, yes, do more of these types of videos, I definitely will. Um, so yeah, definitely let me know if you liked it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.